Welcome to ASTR, bringing together the Adventist Church's past and present in order to inspire for the future. And a warm welcome to this first episode of a video magazine brought to you by the Office of Archives, Statistics and Research at the Seventh-day Adventist Church's World Headquarters. Every other week we will be bringing you inspiring stories from the Church's past and especially from its mission work, along with key facts relating to the Church's present. Our prayer is that you are interested, intrigued and inspired to contribute to the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In this episode, we explore what happened this week in Adventist history, then explain what it is we do in the Archives section of the Office of Archives, Statistics and Research, then look at recent research on why people leave the Adventist Church, and finally share some latest data about schools and teachers. But first, let's go to this week in Adventist history. On January 8, in 1876, the first Seventh-day Adventist baptism in Germany took place, conducted by the German-speaking Swiss Adventist pastor Jakob Erzberger, who you see in this photograph. Erzberger and John N. Andrews, the American missionary leader of Adventist work in Europe, had traveled to northwestern Germany to meet with a group of Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping Baptists. Andrews was not fluent in German, so he spent a few weeks in the Wuppertal area preaching in English while Erzberger translated for him. After that, Andrews went back to Switzerland in October 1875. Erzberger stayed and continued holding lectures in Hilden and Solingen, two small towns between the cities of Wuppertal and Dusseldorf. Soon, Erzberger had eight people ready for baptism, and even though it was midwinter, he baptized them in a lake 147 years ago this week. The group was organized into the first Seventh-day Adventist church in Germany. Here you see the Solingen Church's building in a photograph taken in 1912. Ten years and two days after that first baptism in Germany, the first Seventh-day Adventist church in the Southern Hemisphere was organized in Melbourne, Australia, on January 10, 1886. This was only six months after the first party of Adventist missionaries from the United States had arrived in Australia and was the fruit of tent evangelistic meetings conducted by this man, John Corliss. The new church promptly started holding a new series of evangelistic meetings. By May, the Melbourne Seventh-day Adventist Church had a membership of 90. By 1888, there were 126 Seventh-day Adventists in Australia, which had been organized into a conference. Today, there are nine conferences in Australia with a membership of more than 63,000. Five years later, on January 10, 1891, Harry Moyle Tippett was born in the county of Cornwall in England. When he was two, his parents and five siblings emigrated to the United States moving to the city of Butte, Montana. At the age of 25, Harry became a Seventh-day Adventist and soon married one of the members of the Butte SDA church, Gladys Robinson. Harry worked in Montana's copper mines, but in 1919 he started studying at Walla Walla College, where Gladys paid for his fees by teaching sewing classes. Immediately upon graduation in 1924, Harry was called to teach English at Sutherland Academy in Oregon, and after a year, he became principal. However, just one year later, he and Gladys moved to Battle Creek, Michigan, where Harry had been called to teach in the English department of Emmanuel Missionary College, today's Andrews University. Harry taught there for 20 years and introduced Sabbath afternoon Vespers, which many other institutions copied. In 1946, he was called to the Review and Herald Publishing Association in Washington, D.C. to serve as associate book editor. He spent 25 years in that capacity 
and in all worked for the church for 47 years, retiring only at the age of 81. In addition to editing several hundred books, he himself authored 12 books and wrote many articles for church papers. Harry Tippett died in 1974. That was This Week in Adventist History. Part of what we do in the Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research is records management. You may have wondered, well, what's that? And we're here to tell you what it is. We can't cover everything in this video, but we hope to give you a brief overview and a little peek into what we do with records in ASTR. Records management is, as defined by the Society of American Archivists, the systematic and administrative control of records throughout their life cycle to ensure efficiency and economy in their creation, use, handling, control, maintenance, and disposition. Essentially, we look after records of endearing value, correspondences, photographs, artifacts, audiovisual materials, and that are meant to be kept permanently and make sure that they are properly retained and preserved. Here at ASCR, we manage records created by the various departments, offices, and services of the General Conference of Seventy Adventists, as well as collections donated to the General Conference archives or to the Reebok Memorial Library. Let's walk through what that looks like. It all starts when someone creates a record. This could be an email or the minutes of a meeting or photographs or a recording of an event. A department director might take notes or a department finalizes a publication. These records have the status of in office and the person who created them will often keep the records there while they're in use. The person might also consult the retention schedule for the department. That's a document that identifies and describes how long records should be kept and what should be done with the records long term. So the person might decide that it's time to transfer the records to ASTR and into the record center. Now, most records today are digital, and so the transfer often will take place digitally. But sometimes habits or preferences or legal requirements mean that physical records are kept and these are physically transferred to ASDR. The person who created the record will put the records in a box that we've supplied them with, fill out a short form, and send the box to our department. Once it arrives, our team members assign it a location and make note of the contents in our records management software, Versatil. If the records creator or someone else from their department wants to refer to these records, all he or she needs to do is send us a request and we will retrieve the box and set up a time for the person to view the materials. A record then spends an amount of time in the record center, as predetermined by the retention schedule. In most cases, it's anywhere from 15 to 30 years in the record center. After that, the record is either disposed of or transferred to the archives. In the archives, it will be processed and made accessible to researchers, whether they're in other departments at the headquarters or for a scholar visiting the archives. This also happens to records which are donated to or purchased by the archives. Processing materials usually includes making note of any preservation issues, such as rusty pins or paper clips, and often involves making a more precise inventory of the materials so that we have a better idea of their contents. Such inventories can be used to make what are called finding aids, which help researchers know what's available before they visit the archives and the library. This process takes time and work, and it sometimes goes slower than expected, but it's all a part of ASTR's overall vision of bringing together the Seventh-day Adventist Church's past and present in order to inspire for the future. But maybe you're asking, what's the point of managing records? It's a good question, and there are several good answers. First, Doing so aligns with church policy and complies with legal requirements related to record keeping. Second, it facilitates transparency. Third, it improves efficiency and increases effectiveness of the work of the records creators. Nobody wants to reinvent the wheel, so if we have records of what's been tried before, decisions about what to do next can be made with that information in mind. Fourth, it means that historic records can be creatively used 
for all sorts of things, including one of the things that we love most here in ASTR, sharing about the unique history and heritage of the Seventh-day Adventist Church as captured by the records. We hope you now have a better understanding of ASDR's work in records management. From the very beginning of the Bible, we hear God's call to the first lost couple, Where are you? Genesis 3 verse 9. In the Gospel of Luke, in the well-known 15th chapter, Jesus confirmed God's desire to find the lost. There we read about four possible types that represent lost people. A sheep who knew it was lost but did not know the way back. A lost coin that, on the contrary, had no idea about its lost state. A prodigal son who wanted to be lost. And his older brother who was convinced he was not lost, but who in reality also was. The Office of Archives, Statistics and Research does not only keep historical and statistical records, but it also undertakes human subject research. It looks at key trends and investigates reasons for the current state of the Adventist Church. Alongside many research projects over the last 12 years, it has undertaken two member retention studies. One was predominantly quantitative, while another was qualitative research, that is, interviews with former members were conducted by the Center for Creative Ministry. Both studies aimed to find out why church members who started so strong in their relationships with God and the church then stopped attending the church and left it. What story have the findings unfolded? First, these studies showed that there is no specific type of person who leaves the Adventist church. Among former or inactive members were men and women, young and old, married and single, new converts and long-time members, people both quickly prepared and thoroughly prepared for baptism. Interestingly enough, in one of these studies, almost half, 51%, were members for five or more years before leaving. Second, for many former members, the process of leaving the church was gradual. In this chart, you see that while for 38%, the reason for leaving the church was a specific event, and while 11% of members were disfellowshipped, for half, 51%, it was a gradual process. Of this half, 28% knew they were gradually moving away, but almost a quarter, 24%, said they did not notice it. Where were their friends and other supportive church members during the gradual departure of these people? Third, the research findings debunked the stereotype that people leave the church because of doctrinal disagreement. In response to the question of what event triggered their decision to leave the Adventist church, not many said the reason was doctrinal. Here we see the triggers in priority order. The blue color in the column stands for primary triggers, the orange stands for secondary reasons, and the gray identifies tertiary triggers. Weighing the primary reasons more heavily, the top six triggers for members' decision to leave the church are perceived hypocrisy in other church members, marital difficulties, lack of friends in the church, family conflicts other than within marriages, a high level of conflict in the local church, and personal conflict with local church members. In the young people's subsample, the same top six reasons came up although the priority order was slightly different. The first three for young people were lack of friends in the church, perceived hypocrisy in other church members, and family conflicts other than within marriages. Of course, friends are important for young people, and many of the young respondents were single, so marital difficulties were not among the top three reasons. The top six for them, lack of friends in the church, perceived hypocrisy in other church members, family conflicts other than within marriages, marital conflict, high level of conflict in the local church, and personal conflict with local church members. Thus, we see that the most significant reasons for leaving the church were perceived hypocrisy, lack of friends, 
and different conflicts inside and outside the church. A fourth finding, about three out of four in the qualitative study reported at least one stressful life event had occurred in the year before they decided to stop attending the Adventist church. And the majority reported more than one such event. Thus, these findings show that behind former members' decisions to leave the church were a number of reasons. And there were twofold dynamics. A stressful event that destabilized the life of a person, conflict at home or in the church, or disappointment with church members whose life fell short of expectations, and then a failure of the congregation to respond with understanding and care for the stress and to the needs of those who were hurt or suffering or disappointed or just gradually drifting away. But the good news is, and this is the fifth point, that many former members were open to reconnecting with the church. This chart shows that more than half of the survey said it would be likely or somewhat likely that they would be open to reconnecting. With an additional 17% who said it would depend on the circumstances, the results skyrocket to 81%. You can discover more research findings on former and current members and pastors and leaders of the Adventist Church on the Adventist Research website. But the question today that every one of us should answer is, am I my brother's or sister's keeper? Am I their support in times of trouble? The Data Collection and Publication Team is responsible for the Seventh-day Adventist Yearbook and the Annual Statistical Report. The Seventh-day Adventist Yearbook is the annual publication of the World Church that provides the most recent available mid-year statistics on population by country and the number of churches and members in a particular church organization unit as reported for the second quarter each year. The Annual Statistical Report, or ASR as it is often referred to, is an annual publication of detailed statistical information of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which includes both annual and historical data. The most recent 115-page ASR includes 2020 statistics on worldwide church membership, tithe and offerings, denominational employees, department reports, and historical data. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist church education system is one of the largest, fastest growing Christian school systems in the world? Beginning in the 1870s, the SDA church education system has grown exponentially to a current 9,589 worldwide schools with 111,482 dedicated teachers and an enrollment of 2,064,761. You can see here that in just the last 50 years alone, the number of primary schools has increased by 71%, secondary schools by 612%, and tertiary schools by 5%. In addition, the number of primary school teachers has increased by 412%, secondary school teachers by 789% and tertiary school teachers by 355%. Praise God our church continues to grow in this area. For more information go to www.adventistyearbook.org and www.adventiststatistics.org. Who are the Seventh-day Adventists? who took the Adventist message to India, or who took it to other countries? What is the history of Adventist universities, hospitals, and other institutions around the world? Find out the fullest record of God's wonderful leading of His people in the past and get inspired by the many stories in the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists online at encyclopedia.adventist.org Thank you for watching ASTR, the program that brings together the Adventist Church's past and present in order to inspire for the future. 
A reminder that if you want to receive more content from the General Conference Office of Archives, Statistics and Research, you can sign up to receive our quarterly newsletter, Telling the Story. To sign up, email us, archives at gc.adventist.org. That's archives at gc.adventist.org. Thanks again for watching. Join us again soon as we bring you more of the most inspiring and interesting content from the Adventist Church of yesterday and today.